differentiation. It is a process by which a less specialized cell or immature cell becomes a more specialized or mature cell type to perform a specific function. If tumor cells bear little or no resemblance to tissue of origin, it is said to be poorly differentiated or anaplastic. When tumor cells resemble the cells of the tissue of their origin, it is said to be well differentiated. Why do we care whether a tumor is well differentiated or poorly differentiated? In general, poorly differentiated tumors are more aggressive and have a worse prognosis compared with well differentiated tumors. This is an important characteristic that can be identified by pathologists and is critical in the grading of tumors. Conditions related to differentiation Metaplasia Metaplasia is the process by which one adult cell type is replaced by another cell type and it often occurs as an adaptive change in response to repeated or chronic cell stress. Typically, it is reversible meaning that if the stressor is removed, the cells can revert to their original type. The new cell type is usually resistant to the inciting irritant or the environmental cause which triggered it. There is no pleomorphism and cell polarity. Cell and nuclear size are not altered. Let's take an example here. In response to chronic smoking, the normal columnar epithelium of the respiratory tract gets replaced by squamous epithelium, or squamous metaplasia. Hence, squamous cell carcinoma of lung is more common in smokers. In Barrett's esophagus, the stratified squamous epithelium of the lower end of the esophagus is replaced by columnar epithelium in response to chronic exposure to gastric acid due to gastric reflux seen in GERD and the newly formed columnar epithelium secretes protective mucus as a compensatory measure. A small number of cases of Barrett esophagus can develop into esophageal adenocarcinoma if left untreated. An important point to note here is that metaplasia often predisposes to neoplasia. Here we have another term to discuss known as transdifferentiation. Transdifferentiation is a type of metaplasia in which a non-stem cell transforms into a different type of cell or an already differentiated stem cell. Let's take a look at dysplasia. Dysplasia is referred as an abnormal architecture of tissue due to haphazard proliferation of cells. In dysplasia, there is a loss of cellular orientation size, and shape of the cells in relation to normal tissue. Dysplasia is partially reversible, meaning it is reversible in early stages and later it is irreversible. The best example is cervical dysplasia of squamous cells. Dysplastic cells look abnormal. They can show various types of morphologic changes including pleomorphism, hyperchromatic nuclei, irregularly shaped nuclei, high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio, loss of polarity, lack of distinction between the top and bottom of the cell. Disorderly architecture, for example, cells piling on top of each other instead of sitting in a neat row. Why do we pay attention to dysplastic changes in non-neoplastic cells? Because dysplasia often precedes cancer. In cancers of epithelial tissue, such as squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma, cells often show dysplastic changes long before they turn into cancer cells. Why does it matter how bad the dysplasia is? Because the degree of dysplasia is directly correlated with the likelihood of developing cancer. Sometimes dysplasia disappears and the cell reverts to normal never progressing to become cancerous. This is especially true for cells that are mildly dysplastic. However, once dysplastic changes become severe, chances are very high that cancer will follow. Let's discuss few terms here. Carcinoma in situ. When dysplastic changes involve entire thickness of epithelium, 
but the lesion remains confined to the normal tissue and there is no penetration of the basement membrane, it is known as carcinoma in situ, or in simple words, it is cancer in place. There is a stage after severe dysplasia called carcinoma in situ. In carcinoma in situ, the cells are cancerous, but they are pre-invasive and have not broken through their basement membrane and penetrated the underlying tissue. Carcinoma in situ is the very earliest stage of cancer, also referred to as stage zero. Removal of a cancer at this stage is curative because the tumor has not metastasized. Invasive carcinoma When there is penetration of basement membrane and tumor cells move beyond the normal confines, it is referred to as invasive carcinoma. Now coming to anaplasia. It refers to loss of differentiation. Anaplasia is a hallmark of malignant transformation. An anaplastic tumor does not resemble its tissue of origin at all. The cells have none of the characteristics of their normal counterparts and it's impossible to tell what types of cells they are by just looking at them. Anaplastic tumors are composed of undifferentiated cells, that is, cells that do not show any characteristics pointing toward a particular cell type. On the differentiation spectrum, anaplastic tumors are at the extreme far end, past poorly differentiated tumors. Anaplastic tumors tend to be composed of cells that are very strange looking. They may be gigantic, contain multiple nuclei, or have huge nucleolus. These odd-looking cells are often called anaplastic. It is purely irreversible. Let's focus on some of the salient features of anaplasia. Pleomorphism. It is variation in shape and size of the cancer cells. Hyperchromasia. Increase in nuclear cytoplasmic ratio. Normal nucleus to cytoplasm ratio is 1 is to 4 or 1 is to 6 where in anaplasia it is 1 is to 1. Increase in mitosis, loss of polarity, tumor giant cells with hyperchromatic nuclei. Tumor grading is a useful histological tool that incorporates the degree of differentiation of a cancer among other things. There are specific grading systems for specific cancers, such as the gliosin grading for prostate cancer. Note that the tumor grading is not the same as cancer staging. The grade of a tumor refers to the way a tumor looks under the microscope and the stage of a tumor refers to its size and degree to which it has spread or metastasized. Desmoplasia Desmoplasia is referred to as proliferation of fibrous tissue in response to neoplasm. It occurs mainly due to formation of an abundant collagenous stroma. Desmoplastic reactions are seen in pancreatic adenocarcinoma and cholangiocarcinoma. Now let's take a look at the table which shows the differences between metaplasia, dysplasia, and anaplasia. Here we have the criteria and how each of the three differ. Reversibility. Metaplasia is reversible. Dysplasia is partially reversible. It is early stage reversible and anaplasia is irreversible. Pleomorphism is absent in metaplasia, it is low-grade in dysplasia, and of high-grade in anaplasia. Nuclear cytoplasmic ratio is normal in metaplasia, that is 1 is to 4, it is increased in dysplasia, and increased in anaplasia, 1 is to 1. Hyperchromasia is absent in metaplasia, slightly present in dysplasia, and of high grade in anaplasia. Cell polarity is normal in metaplasia. It is lost in dysplasia and anaplasia. Mitosis is minimal or absent in metaplasia. There is a mild increase, typical type of mitotic figure in dysplasia, and increase an atypical mitotic figure in anaplasia.